Hi, thanks for stopping by. This is Tinkineering with that Rob Clark. I've had this action camera for a while now, but the waterproof case that it comes with sometimes gets in the way. So, I'll 3D print a new one. Let me show you how. Let's get started by looking at the case I already have. It's a pretty good dustproof waterproof case which has the regular action camera clip at the bottom and it's rigged up for my tripod right now. Taking the camera in and out all the time is a real pain so I need to find a better way to get at the ports and the memory card. I couldn't find a model online for this brand of camera but using my trusty calipers I was able to figure out that it's roughly the same size as the old GoPro Heroes. After a little searching I settled on this model. It's about 90% of the way there. I just need a little tinkeneering to fill in the rest. I downloaded the model to my Mac and then checked it out. I could see that the holes on the side were in the wrong place and it wasn't quite deep enough to cover the whole camera. So I came up with a way to modify that. I imported the STL file into my desktop version of SketchUp. This brings the model in as one object. After exploding this model into smaller parts, I set about making changes. Positioning the camera inside the model, I highlighted the lines connected to the holes I didn't need and removed them. This blew out the wall on the left side of the model. Then I did exactly the same on the opposite side. Then using the rectangle tool I filled the holes back in. making sure I fix the outside and the inside of the model. This gives me a blank canvas on both sides to punch out holes exactly where I need them. When I measured my camera, I found that the width and the height were the same as a GoPro, but it was a couple of millimeters thicker. So I needed to adjust the height of the model. Rotating the model onto the side, I used the select tool again to highlight the top edge of the model. The move tool then let me stretch the model to the height I needed. Now I don't know about you but I like to draw guidelines to help me position things on my models. I'd already worked out the shape and the size of the holes that I needed so these guidelines helped me get things exactly where I wanted them. With the guidelines in place it was easy to use a combination of circles and rectangles to construct the shape of the hole that I needed. I removed any extra lines that I didn't need just to leave me with one shape. Then I used the push-pull tool to drop that shape through the model past the inside edge of the frame. By selecting the inside face of the model, I could intersect this with the shape I just dropped through the model. That created an identical hole on the inside face. All I needed to do then was expose the hole by cutting off the bits I didn't need. The hole on the other side was a different shape but I made it in exactly the same way. I drew my guidelines, used them to fashion out a shape for the hole, then push the hole through the model and trim away the excess pieces. And those were my modifications done. I've installed a SketchUp extension which allows me to export STL files. I sent this to the 3D printer but it was apparent from the start that something wasn't right. The model seemed to be printing in two separate parts. I cancelled the print and examined the pieces the printer had made. Looking at the half printed model I could see there was a wedge missing out of one of the corners. The only explanation was there must be something wrong with the model. So I imported my model back into SketchUp. Using the zoom tool I flew inside the model to check out the corner that was giving me problems. And there inside the model was a white ball that should be there. I deleted this wall 
and a few others and found that I could see properly through to the outside edge. I re-exported the model and sent it back to the printer for a second attempt. This time it was much more successful. I ended up with a nice 3D print. I was able to snip open the bottom part of the model and test fit the camera. It was a really good fit. I used the snips to remove the remaining support material to open up the holes in the camera frame. Then I clipped the camera and the frame into a tripod mount. And one final test was to run the camera on external power. And here it is, one 3D printed case for my KidVision action camera. All the buttons are available like they were before, but now I have an extra opening into which I can put a power supply and get at the memory card without all that tedious mucking about with the waterproof case. I hope you like this technique and that it shows you that you can take something and make it work your way. Now there's a wide range of 3D models available online for you to tinker with and I'll be uploading the model for this to Thingiverse and I'll put a link to that in the description. While you're down there looking for that, I'd love to know what you think about this project, so leave me a message or ask me a question in the comments below and I'll do my best to reply. If you do like this video, please consider petting the algorithm puppy by tapping the like button. Your support for this channel is very much appreciated. Now, I've got more projects planned, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell to be told when I upload new videos. And finally, I've created a Patreon page for this channel. If you feel like you could support me even more than you already have, please consider visiting me over there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.